What's going on everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now and today we're going to show you some hidden gem towns across Arizona. For those of you who've watched our previous videos, you know that we've gotten lots of views because this is a very popular subject. So we've decided to add some new ones to the list for 2024. So if you're excited about this one, you're definitely going to want to stick around because we've got 10 small towns literally from the north to the south to the east and western parts of Arizona. So sit back, relax, and bust out the popcorn. As always, there will be timestamps below in the description so you can bounce around from town to town. So do check the links in the description as well. First up, we're headed down south to Bisbee, this old copper mining town. Made our list back in 2020, but we're doing it again. Some of the important landmarks and sites to check out are going to include the Queen Mine, which operated for over 100 years. Also driving right here through the old historic downtown area, but I would really recommend parking the car and then walking around here because there's a lot of shops you'll want to check out. It feels like it's stuck in time here in Bisbee. Bisbee is located near the U.S. border, making it a popular travel destination for people looking to head down to the southwestern region of the United States. While here, also consider checking out the Bisbee Mining and Historical Museum, Bisbee's Brewery Gulch, which is a district once known for its saloons and brothels. For those of you who like gems, Bisbee is known for turquoise, they call it the Bisbee Blue. And the good news about Bisbee is it's known as having some of the best weather in the world, at least that's what they like to claim. Sitting up here at 5,000 feet in the Mule Mountains. Speaking of mules, what do you say we say what's up to the donkeys out here in Oatman, Arizona? Located in northwestern Arizona, it's out here in the mountains all by itself. The old Oatman ghost town is known for its history and structures that remain, creating a ghost town atmosphere. The old Oatman Hotel, built in 1902, is one of the town's oldest historic landmarks, known for its western charm, that was once frequented by Clark Gable and Carol Lombard during their honeymoon. The name of the mountain range here is called the Black Mountains. It is about 55 minutes drive from Kingman. The population of Oatman is actually 43, which is down from 2014's estimate around 80 people. So as you can see, it truly is a small, small town. Originally settled in the mid 1800s as a gold mining camp, the name came about because of a 14 year old girl named Olive Oatman who was captured by the natives after her pioneer family was massacred on the way from Illinois in 1851. While here, do be sure to take a picture with some burrows. Next up, we're headed to another western town. This one here is North Phoenix, located in Cave Creek, Arizona. And believe it or not, the mountain here is also called Black Mountain. And if you wanted to get here from Phoenix, you just take Cave Creek Road north about 20 minutes and you'll be here right along Old Frontier Town. While here, check out the Rare Earth Gallery, Cave Creek Museum, head up to Spur Cross at the Jewel of the Creek, and also Frontier Town. They got some popular saloons here like Harold's and Buffalo Chip. Local businesses here do love when you come up and spend your hard-earned dollars, and if you do show up, tell them that the good guys over at Living in Arizona Now sent you. Cave Creek is actually my hometown, and if there was a restaurant here that I would recommend, it's a place that I used to work at when I was in high school called El Encanto. So if you like Mexican food, definitely check that one out. Just so happens to be right across the road here from Frontier Town. There used to be a restaurant here called the Satisfied Frog, but there was a fire and it burned down, unfortunately. The population of Cave Creek is around 10,000, but they have a city ordinance saying that no corporations or fast food chains can build here. But there is one, it's the Dairy Queen because it's grandfathered in. If you're looking for a hike to do, you can actually go to the top of Black Mountain. It takes about an hour and a half. I've gone up there around five to ten times in my life. The neighboring town with Cave Creek here is Carefree, which is considered one of the most expensive zip codes in all of the state. And I'm sure by now you're wondering why they call it Cave Creek. Well, the truth is there's a small stream, we call it a creek out here, where the water comes down from Spur Cross and an Elephant Butte. And on the right side of that creek, there is a large cave. It's a bit of a hike to get there and not easy to find. Next up, we're headed up to the Verde Valley. This here is Cottonwood sitting right alongside, which translates to the Green River. 
Cottonwood is known for its historic old town where you'll find boutiques, galleries, restaurants, and a historical ambiance right here with these preserved buildings. It's also famous here for the Verde Valley Wine Trail. So if you come up here, do some wine tasting because they have several award-winning wineries and tasting rooms with vineyard tours. People also like to take the old Verde Railway. In this area of the Verde Valley, you're gonna find Clarkdale, Cornville, and several other towns, including Camp Verde, right alongside the old river here, which has the headwaters up there nearby Sedona. Also right here is where the Oak Creek meets the Verde. So lots to do out here. And there's an old Native American ruin here called Tuzagu. The area is actually popular with people who drive motorhomes around America and they stop right here for a couple days at one of these RV parks. But that's because you have historic parks and museums in the area that people visit. There's a lot of water activities out here that people like to enjoy, especially on a hot day. It's about 10 degrees cooler up here than Phoenix on average. But on a hot day when it's 110 in Phoenix, it's at least 102 over here, thereabouts. And you have a lot of hiking in areas like Mingus Mountain, along with bird watching, especially right along the river, you'll find that's one of the most diverse ecosystems for birds you'll find anywhere in the country, actually. Now from the Verde Valley, we're headed back down to Southern Arizona. This here is Tombstone, the old Western shootout town. Many of you know for the OK Corral with Doc Holliday and Wyatt Earp. You'll know you're in Tombstone when you're at the Boot Hill Graveyard. Down in the old historic district, many of these structures date back to the early 1800s, including many of these well-preserved saloons, shops, hotels. Also, the world's largest rose bush is actually located here in Tombstone. If you go down to the actual historic area, you can take a stagecoach ride. You can go down to the Tombstone Courthouse State Historic Park. Go down to Allen Street, walk around where there's many different shops. Also, they have historical tours, Wyatt Earp's old home, so much to do down here. And be sure to check out the Birdcage Theater. My personal favorite is the old Gunslinger Museum where they talk about the history of the Wild West, not just here in the Southwest or Arizona and Tombstone, but all of the West, how the pioneers in the Wild West kind of came together. The old historical town really does feel like it's stuck in time probably dating all the way back to the 1800s. You get to go to the Big Nose Kate Saloon, you go in there and you're like, wow, this must have been exactly how it was like back in the 1800s. One thing I will say about Tombstone in general, the area, it's very beautiful, green, it's a flat plateau. They get a lot of monsoon activity in the summertime and it is a bit high elevation, so in the winter it can get a bit brisk but there's not too much housing or development that goes on aside from just the old historic town around here. And as you can see driving around, there's no new buildings. It's all old buildings. You're not gonna see a new hotel or a new motel, or you might find an occasional gas station that looks new, but aside from that, you're not gonna get any new construction going on out here. Next up, we're going about 45 minutes northwest of Phoenix here. This is Wickenburg, known for its Western heritage as well. You can check out the Dude Ranch capital of the world. That's what they're calling it. You have the Vulture Mine, which was once the richest gold mine in Arizona during the 19th century. You can get a guided tour over there. Or you can just drive down the old historic downtown where you're going to find the Desert Caballeros Western Museum. For those of you who don't know, a caballero is a cowboy, that's just in Spanish. They also have the Wickenburg Rodeo here where you can experience the cowboy lifestyle. They have Haseampa River Preserve, which is a really nice biosphere ecosystem for high desert. And then you have the Gold Rush Days, which is a celebration for the old Gold Rush history. And by the way, if you guys really enjoy videos like this where we show you around small towns and secluded areas, let us know in the comments because we can do more secluded areas. Places like Young, Arizona, which is really a town on an island out there in the middle of north central Arizona, just about 50 miles east of Payson off the Mogollon Rim there. 
and then you have some other areas around four corners so if you guys like these kind of videos let us know in the comments and we'll try to get you more secluded areas places like Morency and stuff maybe even a part two to this one where we show you around 10 more towns so definitely let us know in the comments if you don't say anything then how do we know another idea for a video might be showing you around 10 arizona mining ghost towns that literally are ghost towns meaning the only things left here are the ghosts of the past no people But anyways, now from Wickenburg, what do you guys say we head down to Southern Arizona, just north of the U.S.-Mexico border this year is Tubac, right along the De Anza Trail, which connects to Camino Real in California, where the missions are. So that means there are several missions here, Southern Arizona, like San Javier and Tumacacori, which is nearby Tubac. The town itself is actually known for its vibrant art scene, home to numerous different galleries, studios that showcase local art, that southwestern twist inspired by Spanish and Mexican culture. You have the Tubac Center for the Arts, the Presidio State Park. Even if you go a little bit further south towards Nogales, about 25 minutes, you'll come across some wetlands. So lots to do down here, but the big thing I would encourage is walking around Tubac's downtown area where they have the boutiques, do some wine tasting because Southern Arizona also has a wine country just like the Verde Valley. Tubac is about 35 to 40 minutes south of Tucson. Also in between here and Tucson is going to be Madera Canyon. If you get a chance, you can drive up there, do some camping or hiking at the very least. You will find black bears and a wide variety of wildlife actually. On the other side of Tubac is going to be Patagonia. So this is a really interesting part of Arizona. I personally love Southern Arizona, as you can see. We've got a few towns, Tubac, Bisbee, and now Tombstone as well, all on this list. So if you haven't been down to Southern Arizona, I highly recommend you getting down there to explore it. It's a higher elevation down there, so it's a bit cooler than Phoenix Valley's. One day, I personally would like to have some land down here in a ranch, at least two to three acres, that'd be perfect. But yeah, you can see the freeway here. They have border patrol checkpoints down in this area, so keep that in mind when you're down here. Don't be doing any dirty stuff. <laughs> and speaking of Patagonia, here we are in Patagonia. This is just on the other side of Mount Wrightson, where they have the Madera Canyon area also. And you, in order to get here, you would basically go through Nogales, wrap around, if you wanted to wrap around the north side, you could also do that, although it's a dirt road. The benefit of going the north route is you can also do Madera Canyon. The benefit of doing the southern route is Rio Rico and Nogales. But I would say this area is about 45 to 50 minutes away on the southern route from Tubac and probably an hour and a half away from Tubac if you go the northern route. But the northern route includes the Madera Canyon route. And when you get to Patagonia, you'll see it's quite the small town. They also have a lake around here. If you guys like to go out to lakes, definitely check out Patagonia Lake. Great views of Mount Wrightson. The population of Patagonia, Arizona is around 800 people. So it's definitely a small town. Most people are drawn to it because of the name, not to be confused with Patagonia and Chile, right? By the way, in the winter time, it can get pretty close to snowing down here and the summers get a lot of monsoons. Now we're headed up to the Central Valley again. This time we're headed up the mountain though to the Big J. This is Jerome. They call it a ghost town, although technically in order to be a ghost town, there's got to be no one here but the ghosts of the past. So it's really just a revived ghost town. It's an old mining, copper, silver, gold village that actually was a main boom town in Arizona. It was one of the largest towns in Arizona around the 1920s with old Phelps Dodge. Nowadays, most people just consider it a ghost town because some of the buildings up here are considered haunted. That's why you would go on a ghost tour. Also, just walking the main drag down the mountain or up the mountain. Definitely a cool experience. Maynard from the band Tool actually has a vineyard around here. So he's got a classic shop right there on the mountainside. His vineyard's actually called Caduceus Vineyard, so look them up if you're looking for the wine. 
If you're looking to head up to the Verde Valley from Phoenix, it would take about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on traffic up the I-17. But from Cottonwood, you can easily get to Jerome within a half hour and hit up Cornville uh, to the north of Cottonwood, which would be out of the way a bit. But if you went to Clarkdale, you'll actually get some history there, check out the Verde Railway, and then head up towards Jerome. And you've really had two trips in one with the small towns with a couple extra credit points, right? The population of Jerome is around 467 people as of 2021. It's not growing and it's not really losing population, so it's staying steady up here. There's also a cool burger joint up here called The Haunted Burger, so plan for around one to two hours walking around Jerome, depending on what you do. Some people actually come up here and stay the night. That's if you wanted to experience some of those haunted vibes that people talk about it really happens in the evening time all right so now from jerome we're headed to payson right here at the base of the mogollon rim as you arrive into payson on the beeline highway you'll notice that it turns from high chaparral desert right into pines right there at payson that's kind of what happens right here now, Payson is one of those areas that is growing. It's currently sitting at around 17,000 people living here. That's up quite a bit. It's doubled in the last 20 years. So it's just a matter of time, it seems like, before Payson starts to take off, kind of like what we saw in Prescott. But while you're up here, you can check out the Tonto Natural Bridge. Also go up to Star Valley and then head up onto the rim where they have many different lakes. While you're up on the rim, you'll see elk. Very common to see elk up here. Some bears. The forest is really thick around Payson also, but that's what people like. There's a couple small towns around here past the natural bridge. If you go up a bit, you'll come up into Pine, Strawberry. Those are some really nice small towns that could easily be on this list or part two or part three. But again, you guys are gonna have to tell us if you really love these small towns still heading into 2024, let us know and we will go to the small towns, show you what's going on out there so that you can make your travel plans this winter or next summer, spring, whatever you like to do. But definitely getting around Arizona is something you guys have got to start doing more of, especially during these times where people are so gravitating towards the TV and all the news that's just negative, negative, negative. Getting out here and exploring Arizona can really take your mind off of it and really, in my opinion, heal you of some of the stress that you're feeling. And on that note, that's going to conclude this episode of Living in Arizona Now. We will put some links here at the end so you can watch some more videos from our channel. If you guys love exploring, click on one of these videos next. And thank you to all of our subscribers and our channel members who help make these videos possible for you all.